Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Everything You Love, episode 42. Got some cool things in store for this episode, starting with some questions from you guys out in the community. Then I'm gonna uh, give a little update on uh, new material from my band, The Elite, that I'm excited to talk about. And then finally, I wanna take you through all the components of my brand new live rig. Kamira has a show coming up July 19th here in Ohio at the Incarceration Fest, big festival thing. Uh, and I'm basically uh, going out there with all brand new gear, components I've never used before live in a really cool stripped down rig, basically just two or three pieces, cool cases for everything. Uh, you know, maybe some, some advice or help for guys that are out there playing shows too, looking to strip down their rigs and just make it as mobile as possible. I can fly with this stuff. Everything's cool. And uh, if that sounds good to you guys, let's get started with a couple questions and comments. Okay, starting out with one from 619DAR. What's up, Darren? Big time commenter. Every video, I appreciate that, buddy. Once again, another great Everything You Love, Rob. Thanks, man. I've got a question for the next Everything You Love, and I'm hoping that no one has already asked you this yet. My question can be answered in two parts. When you did a world tour, where did you look forward to playing the most, and where did you hate but knew you had to play US and Europe? That's actually pretty easy for me, and there's really no places that I hate to play. There's lots of places I love to play, but just three come to mind, and it all really kind of just has to do with the travel. So it's Canada, the UK, and Australia. We'll start with Australia. Love playing there, amazing people, amazing shows. We've had such good times over there. Been there, I think four times. And uh, anyways, it's the most brutal flight ever. Anyone who's done it knows. I think it's like, I don't know, 12 or 16 hour flight. Maybe I'm getting that confused with the time change, but it's something like that. You know, it's really like a 24 hour day. Listen to me complaining about going to tour Australia, right? But the thing is, it's just one of those things. You ask the question, so that's it. So when you hear Australia, or when we used to hear Australia, you'd be like, ah, oh, just because of that flight. But once it's over and you get there, it's fantastic. Like I said, really cool place to play and, and a, a total honor to say your band's been to Australia more than once, you know, is, is amazing. So, and then, um, Let's go to the UK. It isn't really the UK. It's, well, love playing the UK. Again, great people and fantastic shows with such an amazing fan base over there. Um, you know, people that really want us to see us again. Maybe we will one day, I don't know, but uh, great times. But what comes to mind, it's actually the UK and, and France because you have to cross the English Channel and that's what I'm talking, what I'm getting at is something that I personally, I know a lot of us dreaded. I mean, it's cool. It's really only like, I think it's like an hour and a half boat trip. And the bus pulls up, gets loaded onto the ferry. But the thing that sucks is you got to get up and it's in the middle of the night they are crossing, you know, or early morning and stuff like that. So, you know, we're just a bu bunch of band guys. Most of us just drunk and passed out, you know, and stuff. And then in the middle of the night, you have to wake up, get out of the bus go upstairs and stuff. Once you wake up, I mean, it's totally cool. And it's it's awesome to say that you've crossed the English Channel. I think we've probably done it 40, 50 times, you know, back and forth and stuff like that. But anyways, again, you asked, and that's one thing that I think, ah, uh, the ferry, we would see it in the itinerary, you know, and stuff and be like, oh man, because you have to do it a bunch of times a lot of time. A lot of time we play the UK, then go back to Europe, play some shows, then go back to the UK again, stuff like that. So again, even as this is coming out of my mouth, I feel like a dickhead even complaining about this, but you get what I'm saying? It's all just travel related. Nothing to do with, uh, you know, being there. Being there, again, was an honor. Same thing with Canada crossing the border. I gotta say, comment if you feel me on this, if you've done this or whatever, but those, like, border patrol agents, they want to, like, find you doing something wrong. They want to, like, find drugs or a, just a reason for you to not let you pass. It's not like, okay, let's get you guys through here as quickly as possible. Again, it's getting up in the middle of the night because you're crossing, you know, so you stumble in there and stuff like that. And then they're just like, they, they're interrogating you as if you've already done something wrong or whatever. So it's just kind of a hassle, you know, and we've done that dozens and dozens of times. So again, it's just about the travel. Once you get to Canada, love playing there. So many great places. Toronto, a million times. Opera House, I know you've seen us there. Montreal, going west, you know, all that. Vancouver, Edmonton. Alberta, Saskatoon, what else? Regina, you know, so, I mean, always great shows. I think, you know, people just around the world outside of America, you know, they just have a, a an awesome appreciation for American bands because they don't get to see them as often. So that really makes it special for the bands because 
the shows are amazing. Everybody comes out and stuff. But uh, but then after you play those shows, you got to cross back over. And the American border agents, they're in no hurry to get you across either. They they think you're up to something, you know, just because you got whatever long hair and, uh, you know, you look like you just woke up drunk out of bed. So that may be it. So ah, maybe I shouldn't have even included this segment. I don't know, because I feel bad. First world problems, right? But hey, that's it. Love playing those places. Hate the travel. Next one from Leather Duck. I've been playing for around 15 years and I've written but never recorded. Is there any chance you could do a video explaining where to start? Essential components on your computer, audio interface, DAWs, basically a beginner's guide on what to buy and how to get started from the ground up. Thanks for everything. We appreciate you. Appreciate you guys tuning in. And I specifically chose this question. It's actually an older one, but I have made this video since. And I think it's really helpful for people. And look, you know, it's it's been real popular. And a lot, of guys, a lot of guys are saying how helpful it is for them. And I've seen this same comment so many times over the last couple of years. And that's what prompted me to actually make the video. I've got a video. I believe it's called How to Get Your Guitar Into Your Computer. And on the thumbnail, it's a beginner's guide to playing your guitar into your computer. Because what I've realized, I make lots of, you know, amp sim videos and recording videos and things like that. And um, I kind of just overlook the fact that people need to figure out a big step before that, which is just how to get started so they can use those tools and begin working with MIDI drums and recording guitars and maybe laying down some vocals, making demos, stuff like that, or just jamming around and stuff. It's still like, how do I get this guitar into my computer? So I made a comprehensive video where I started from scratch, just like Leather Duck requested here. I bought a new interface, I bought a new amp sim, and then I loaded it into my computer step by step with you guys watching me as if I was doing it for the first time, explaining every step. And so if you want to get started, make sure you check out that video. I'll uh, we'll link for you below. Everything I talk about in my videos is always linked in the description box below. So um, definitely check that one out. I know it'll be helpful for you. Maybe it won't have all the answers that you're looking for, but it'll certainly get you started on the right path and help you wrap your head around everything that you need to do. And the number one thing that I always say about this stuff is you just have to get started. Getting started is the hardest thing. From there, you just figure it out as you go. That's what I do every day in life, just figure stuff out. So, yep, check that one out. Another one from 619DAR here, tour related, kind of the, you know, vibe of this video. Gonna be talking about a lot of, lot of live show related stuff. So one question I would like to ask for the next Everything You Love is, what was the one thing that you looked forward to when you came off tour and why? Other than having a real bed to sleep in, another super easy one, and that's a shower. Besides my wife, of course. Didn't have kids at the time that I was touring, but now, I, if it were nowadays, I'd say my wife and kids, obviously. But the other thing is a shower. Again, what you may say, first world problem or whatever, but there's actually this awesome Instagram account that uh, I'll put up on the screen here. You guys should check this out. It's called Tour Showers. And that's because there's this kind of like, you know, known thing amongst touring artists that at our level, um, you know, when you go into lots of these small clubs and stuff, maybe they don't even have a shower, but a lot of the time they do, like no one's keeping up on this thing. It is destroyed. We've encountered every situation from shit splattered all over the walls and sides of showers, blood, you know, like, I don't know, I've seen like, auto parts and stuff like rusted old auto parts at the bottom of the shower. It's like, what is this? You know, and, uh, and you know, it's your only chance for the day, you know, again, going back to, you had a rough night the night before, you know, tied one on, whatever you get up, you just need to, as Jamie Josta says, take your life back. And that's something we would say in Camira all the time. After you get a shower, I just took my life back. You know, you're fresh, ready to go again and stuff. But some of these showers are just brutal. A lot of guys would say, I just can't today. I can't go in that shower or I'd feel dirtier coming out of that thing. I always toughed it out. I always went in there, stood, you know, in flip flops like this if I had to or whatever. But check out some of these these showers here. Check out tour showers. So it's guys going around the country. This didn't exist when uh, when I was touring, but I love it now. Just checking it out because guys are snapping photos. On the flip side, they also snap photos of nice ones. Like whenever we were playing the House of Blues, it'd always be a treat because the backstage amenities were always super nice, everything clean. And that kind of stuff is just important when you're away from home for a long time, uh, you know, just trying to maintain sanity amongst the awesome opportunity that you have to be able to do be doing what you're doing. But uh, at the same time, like certain guys want to stay clean. I do, you know, so Sean Glass, shout out to Sean Glass from uh, Repentance, but he used to play with Dirge Within and Soil and stuff, but he used to call me the cleanest guy in metal. And that's uh, a compliment I'll, I'd like to hang on to. Cheers, Sean. 
Here's one from Jake Fox. Here's a question I've been thinking about, maybe for an Everything You Love episode. How often do you suggest changing the nine volt battery and how often did you change them when you were touring full time? So this is another one that I've heard this question so many times about how long a nine volt battery lasts. So I went ahead and made well, it was a short, I guess. Well, no, I actually talked about this in a setup video, but then I made it a short about it. Pop it up on screen here for you too. The one thing I wanted to address, so you can go watch this, um, and it talks about exactly how often you should change your non-ball battery if this is something you're interested in. But a couple comments that came up that I wanted to address is that people would ask, so I, I said in that, that if you have a cable plugged in, it's drawing power from the battery. So as long as you remember to unplug your cable, it's not drawing power from the battery, it should last a long time, a year or more or whatever. And guys were like, well, what happens if you have a wireless cable plugged in. So obviously those guys kind of missed the point of what I was saying. Perhaps it was my fault for not explaining it properly, but think of it like this. Yes, having anything plugged in is going to draw the battery for active pickups. And you can think of it like this. If you have a light switch for your lights in your house, whatever like that, power is constantly coming into that light switch. And in the off position, it doesn't allow power to pass on then to the light. If you flip the switch up, then power um, goes through and turns on the light. So it's the same thing with the cable going into the input of your guitar. Output, input, some people call it different things, you know? So it's just completing a circuit. So the battery is always there wanting to power the pickup. But unless you complete the circuit by putting in an, uh, a cable, which touches metal to metal, allowing the pickup to then draw power from the battery, um, if that's not there, no power is being drawn. If it is, then you're cool. But a nine volt drains after time, unlike the power in your house, unless you don't pay your bill, you get what I'm saying? So yes, having anything plugged in there just draws power from the battery. So just remember to unplug your uh, your guitar every time you're done jamming and that battery should last for a long time. Finishing up here with, I don't know, it's not gonna be a segment or anything, but the comment of the day, check this one out here. And this is about my uh, Fishman versus EMG pickup challenge here. And he had a, a really great comment here, added a lot to the conversation that says, Fishman, doesn't really different. All right, let's talk a little bit about the Elite, my other main band, my mistress, if you will. So uh, we did our Total Destruction full length in 2018. Some, some of you have heard me talking about how we're working on new material, about five, I think I'm working on song six right now, as a matter of fact, and we're kind of doing it a different way. Both Total Destruction and our 2009 EP, World War III, we were able to record, write and record together as a unit. The guys, TJ Aust or TJ Austin, TJ Frost on vocals, Austin D on, uh, on drums. Austin's currently drummer at Chimera, as a lot of you know. Uh, but um, those guys came into town for weeks at a time and we would write and record those records. And that's the way I like to make a record as a unit, guys jamming together. And I think that creates the best results. However, this time, Things are a little bit different. TJ is out in Boise, Idaho. Austin's in LA. And just due to the circumstances, we're doing it the way kind of everybody's doing it now, which isn't ideal in my opinion, but you kind of have to do what you have to do or else it'll just never happen. And that's we're writing remotely, but we're kind of doing it a slightly different way. I'm writing the skeletons of songs. Then I send them to TJ where he's writing uh, his rough drafts of all his vocals. He sends them back to me. We talk about it. Then I send them out to Austin and he's working on his drum parts mentally and then laying them down. And we're going to create all our demos that way. Uh, so, so that's cool. And it's cool for Austin too, because typically the guitars, drums, bass are all done before a vocalist lays down his vocals. And I'd say 99.9% .9 of recordings of all time. That's kind of how it works very seldom. And in this case, Austin's going to get to write and record his drums with vocals already there, which could lead to some cool things. For instance, accenting certain vocal lines or words with, with symbols and stuff. And it'll just be a kind of a cool dynamic. We actually did the same thing with Six Feet Under's Undead. And I liked a lot of how that came out um, because of that. Chris Barnes's vocals were already there when Kevin Talley got to put his drums in and led to some cool things here and there. So I am kind of excited for that. Like I said, it's not what I totally prefer, but but that's going to be cool. And then after we get, you know, 10, 12 tunes done like that, then the guys will come into town We'll jam through them and record them kind of as quickly as possible. But, um, you know, just time doesn't allow and, and money and resources and everything nowadays with guys with kids and careers or whatever, you know, to uh, to just get together and just take a few months to write and record an album. It's just not possible nowadays. So at any rate, progress is being made. I've been telling myself I'd like to get the album done by the end of this year. I'm probably being overzealous with that. We'll see what happens. But that's currently my goal. 
Um, but uh, so you can look forward to that. And um, of course, if you're a part of my Patreon community, thanks to all you guys, you're going to hear it first. And everybody else will hear it as it is ready, you know? So, um, but yeah, if you want to check that out, I've got a great Patreon community I'd love for you to check out. Patreon.com slash Rob Arnold World. You can read about all the details there, guitar tabs, early looks at the videos, a great community vibe, all that. Check it out. Now, let's get in to the components of my live rig here. Check out these brand new flight cases from Gator. These are so sick. Can't wait to tell you about them and everything that's going on. Let's do it. Okay, so it all starts with the Fender Tomaster Pro which I went over in great detail in a previous video. This is the heart and soul, my sound, the tone now, all my effects, everything, my preamp, also the um, Seymour Duncan Power Stage 200 there, which is my power amp, and then the Shure, uh, what is this called again? GLXD 16 Plus is my wireless. Again, I went over all this, my custom pedal board build in a separate video, check that out if you haven't seen it. Um, so I'm stoked on this and all it can do. I'm also stoked on those huge reflections from the light above me. Nothing I can do about that. But, uh, but then I was thinking, all right, how am I going to transport this thing? There's a million options and I was scratching my head for weeks figuring it out. And I finally decided on this huge road case. It's not a Pelican brand, but it's basically a Pelican case. But super tank tough, waterproof, as if that matters or anything. But I'm stoked on this thing, except for its size, because it is gigantic. I'll go into why in a moment. But uh, so I custom did all this foam in here exactly the way you see it for an exact reason. I mean, I literally put all of this in. I cut it all. I glue, hot glued it in. I mean, all those ledges, everything. You'll see why in a second. But I custom did all this, and it's definitely overkill for that. However... I decided that um, I wanted to bring something else along with me. Many of you are familiar with my Ultra Case Tech Box here. This is what I do a lot of my guitar setups and stuff on, and it's a, just a, a cool little case. So I don't have to bring my huge guitar workstation. I'm trying to make everything as portable as possible here. So this is uh, the Ultra Case Box, and I wanted to be able to bring this, and I wanted to be able to have just stuff compact, everything together. Make this rig as portable as possible. So check this out. This is a foam fit perfectly to hold this at the bottom. Fits right in there, nice and snug. And then the Zone Master Pro goes right on top and fits right in there, cut out perfectly for everything. I'll give a uh, overhead view in a sec here. And then all my cables live right there. And uh, it closes right up, I'll show you that in a sec. But uh, yeah, you can see the overhead, so you see the cutouts even for my, my cables there and everything for the, the power stage. So I'm um, stoked on that, nothing moves. It's all good. Closes up. Again, this thing is a monster, but I explored so many options doing length ones, but I just couldn't get find the right dimensions. This was the only one that was gonna work just right. Oh my God, it's so heavy. Uh, hopefully somebody else will be lugging this around. Where is the, uh, I'm trying to find that like suitcase thing. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so one of these. So this thing is ready to roll through the airport. Not stoked on that. <laughs> but it's gonna get the job done. And then we move on to the Gator Dual Guitar Vault that can hold two guitars, which is awesome. And that's all I'm planning on bringing on the road now because with the Fender Tone Master Pro, oops, which is put away, I can easily change tunings with the click of a button. 
So we got that guy, we got that guy, and then my two new PV Invective cabs. Maybe I'm only gonna bring one on the road. I haven't decided that yet. Don't need the heads anymore since the Tone Master Pro and the Seymour Duncan Power Stage is gonna provide my tone. But the PV Invective cabs, which I absolutely love, got a full video on these guys, check them out. But I wanted to be able to protect them and that's why I got these brand new Gator G Tour Cab 412 hard shell cases, courtesy of Sweetwater and Gator. Thank you so much. Uh, I've been wanting to get these bad boys cased up for a minute. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about why I believe in this so much, why I think it's so important to have your investments protected like this. You know, you spend so much money on your gear that we all love so much and you need to protect it from damage, from wear and tear. So check out this little spiel about why I think road cases are so important. Let's take a look at an old cabinet of mine. This is a Marshall 1960 BB, and it was the very first brand new cab I bought for myself back in like 1999. It still sounds great, but it's looking pretty darn beat up. It's never had the pleasure of living in a road case, and that's why it looks like this. And it's never done any real touring, just local gigs and in and out of rehearsal spaces and studios. But that's what most people are doing with their cabs too, right? in and out of vans and clubs and basements. And no matter how careful you are, exterior damage is inevitable. And this cab here is the perfect example of why I think it's so important to protect your gear with cases. And Gator has a huge line of affordable consumer and pro-grade cases for any piece of gear you're looking to protect. I knew I wanted to protect my beautiful new cabs before they ever left the house and hit the stage. And so here's what I chose. This is the Gator G Tour Cab 412. It's a shock mount, flight ready 4x12 cab case that's built tank tough with high quality components. I think that red hardware looks really, really good and is such a nice touch. Let's take a look inside here. Got a heavy duty lid with handles on the outside and a carpeted interior. The interior of the case itself is designed as an adjustable fit case thanks to these removable and modifiable dense foam pieces that attach with Velcro, allowing you to adjust the width and depth of the case for almost any 4x12 cab. It's surrounded by ultra durable EVA interior padding and a 3 8 inch plywood construction comes with four premium caster wheels, two of which are lockable, and all are attached to a removable caster base. Here's a look at the backside, and check out this super cool design feature. It's got a rear cable port for attaching your speaker cable to your amp head, and to make things even more convenient, there's even a hinged rear access door, a design I've personally never seen before. How cool is that? Heavy-duty handles are mounted on all four sides of the case, making transport a breeze. And let me tell you, these things feel really high quality. Let's get a look with one of my cabs installed. Beautiful. And when we open up this rear door, look at all the miscellaneous storage space you've still got. I'm thinking you could put cables in there, tools, strings, pedals, whatever. And speaking of cables, let's get this speaker cable plugged in. Mm -hmm. Yep. And here's what it looks like taking advantage of the rear cable port. Man, looks like we're ready to rip. Oh, I mentioned that the caster plate itself is removable in case you need to for whatever reason. And that's what I ended up doing for the time being. And it's simple to remove with just four bolts using a half inch socket wrench or a crescent wrench or, you know, whatever tool you prefer. I'm just gonna pull this out here and it's just as easy to reattach when it's time to roll. Yeah. And check it out. It now makes for a cool little heavy duty dolly for moving other things around if need be. Yes, sir. The Gator G Tour Cab 412 case. And of course, you can find a Sweetwater link for these in the description box below. All right, so I know these things aren't cheap, 
But again, it's about protecting your investment. I also realized that this stuff probably isn't relevant to so many of you out there, but for the dudes it is relevant for, trust me, you wanna protect your stuff. These come in at about a thousand bucks, but the fact that they're universal and they can be used with any cabinet really, because of the foam stuff, you can fit anything in there is great. A lot cheaper than getting custom cases. I remember when Kimura got all our custom cases at the same time back uh, in 2001 for Pass Out of Existence. I think that bill was like 30,000 bucks or something like that for custom cases for everything. So it's actually affordable if you think about it in a certain way. And again, I mean, spend that. It's just like getting insurance for your caps, you know, especially if you got dope ones. So that's gonna wrap it up. Thanks for listening. If you made it this far, I really appreciate you. Don't forget to pick up 10 of my free custom guitar picks by ordering my guitar instructional DVD, which then you can throw away, use as a drink coaster, or perhaps pop it in and, uh, you know, learn something about some riffing, soloing, song songwriting, arranging, all that kind of stuff. Find it now, free, sh free worldwide shipping, robarnoldworld.com slash store and also i know you could try to hide it but i know a ton of you aren't subscribed to the channel so please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as it's a big help to me and it doesn't cost you anything no obligation anything like that but it means a lot to me if you like this video hit that like button thanks everybody for watching i really appreciate you and uh, i'll be back with more soon for now cheers